Welcome to Sex Attend. I'm Rebecca Rosenblatt, Certified Relationship and Sexuality Therapist and your host, here to answer your questions on all things intimate. Whether you're stuck in a relationship dilemma, have issues with your body, trust, trauma, addiction, or orientation, or just need a little help with turning up the heat in your bedroom, give us a shout at 1-800-968-7836 and let's chat. Everything's fair game. If you've thought about it, we can talk about it. Last week, we discussed the importance of sex in marriage with an expert who sees marriages fall apart all the time for myriad reasons. This week, we'll be addressing the best way to manage divorce in the event that a marriage doesn't make it, to handle emotions and finances in the best way possible, because ending a relationship is hard enough. And to help me with that discussion, we're being joined by Ari Kaplan. Among other things, Ari is a lawyer and a mediator who leads Alternative Dispute Resolution, a.k.a. ADR, for families, companies, and workplaces. So we're very grateful that he'll be answering some tough questions for us tonight to best handle a painful reality that many people are being faced with nowadays. Welcome to Sex at 10. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me, Rebecca. We're very excited that you'll be handling some pretty tough questions, and we're hoping that our audience will participate in this discussion. Thank you. Ari, when a marriage ends beyond the heartache of a broken relationship, decisions have to be made around property, kids, division of assets, custody, support, finances, etc., etc. Important stuff, but the last things a broken heart or stressed out mind wants to think about. So I'm really glad that you'll be shedding some light on the right and the wrong ways of dealing with all that. Can you please begin by giving us a Reader's Digest version of the difference between self-representation, litigation, and alternate, alternative dispute resolution? Absolutely, thank you. So when a relationship ends, uh, you have to deal with some legal issues to get through, like Rebecca said, primarily around finances, property, your house, pension, etc., or children if you have any, what their mm -hmm. schedule is going to be, who's going to make major decisions for you know health, education, Custody, et cetera. and those types. Of things. So there's two ways you can basically look to resolve uh, those kinds of issues. You can either uh, litigate or negotiate. And mm -hmm. if you want to litigate, that's the process of you know going to court and asking a judge to make some d decisions and orders about what would be the appropriate arrangements for those types of things. Mm -hmm. And the other is to negotiate, and that's the world uh, that I belong to, and that's the world of alternative dispute resolution that you uh, described. And um, uh, with that, there is, um, it's up to you. You can either represent yourself mm -hmm. uh, or you can have a lawyer do that. And that applies, you should know, not only in the courts if you want to litigate, but also if you want to negotiate and you want to mediate a solution. It's very mm -hmm. helpful to have a lawyer as well. But ultimately, it's up to you. So you can choose, and your circumstances may make that choice readily apparent, uh, mm -hmm. but how to do one or the other. Sounds great, especially since uh, w when you're talking about negotiations, you have more of a say. So it's not just you're going into litigation and a judge is going to decide and things can go either way. I've known so many couples in counseling where from one minute to the next, they weren't sure which direction it was headed in. And that's the wonderful thing about negotiation in the you're world of ADR of and mediation is that you control the process. I mean, you and the other party will agree to you know w what you want to have resolved mm -hmm. and you may decide that you don't even want to uh, litigate all issues you may want to agree on some issues but you may not be able to so you agree may decide to hive off some issues that do need to be uh, uh, litigated or decided by another person and that doesn't have to be a judge it can right. also be an individual who's uh, in the world of ADR as an arbitrator as well who mm -hmm. will make you know legally binding decisions mm -hmm. for you but the great thing is that you choose that and that that's, uh, that's the great thing about that's, it. That's the good thing about it. Now, there's a huge, uh, outside of the emotional costs, because litigation can be uh, quite difficult and painful just because, you know, you're not as involved as negotiation. But it's also fiscally, too, there's a huge difference in what you'll end up paying for the process. So can you quickly tell us what is the difference between those as far as, uh, financially, as far as cost of the process goes? Well, quite simply, the more emotionality that's involved in 
in trying to come to these resolutions, the more it's going to cost. And the reason for that is because emotions dig in and, and make our, our barriers to helping you get from A uh, to B. So in terms of uh, doing it through uh, negotiation, the cost is much less than litigation. And just in the news, there was a case out of Hamilton a couple of weeks ago where a couple spent $500,000 on lawyers wow. in court to resolve their separation and divorce. And these weren't wealthy people. One of them was a police officer. So we're talking about ordinary people who have problems and when emotions dig in the costs go up people the dig in their heats when emotions dig in people dig in their heats and uh, heels and they don't want to um, they don't want to think of the other party and uh, people do get emotional that that china plate that you hated from <laughs> your partner's mother suddenly you want it and uh, people do get very very uh, upset and involved viewers since this is difficult stuff to talk about if you're in a situation where you could use some direction please grab that phone right now and take Take advantage of the opportunity to get your questions answered. Now, from what you've shared, obviously, ADR is the way to go. Big fan myself because I too am certified in that. So, why don't you just take a moment to briefly describe what that process looks like? So, the wonderful thing about mediation is that it's a safe space for you and the other person to address the issues without having to worry about the litigation process. So, the way it looks is that you come into an office and there's usually a large boardroom and you and your lawyer or representative and in the family uh, separation world by the way you don't need a lawyer to be there with you you can have another family professional such mm -hmm. as someone who's expert in in parenting mm -hmm. uh, or someone who's involved in finances and that goes for the mediator as well and you sit around a table and you also have another room as well and that's because when emotions get involved or you want to consult with your advisor or your lawyer then you have like a breakout room where mm -hmm. you can also have some private space and that's also to help people feel safe about it as well mm -hmm. and then in the middle and of the big room with the with the professional that they brought with them it's so mm -hmm. important that you're educated and that you are empowered with professionals who can help you and if you can't afford those professionals through resources that are available mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. so in a mediation setting the mediator I'd be sitting there and all you would and the other person would be there with your representatives and I would describe the process of how we're going to uh, rules that we're going to follow to carry out the negotiation for both people to tell their stories mm -hmm. you know in a non-judgmental way and you should know the mediator is neutral we're impartial we're not there to advocate for any one of you we're there to help you mm -hmm. hear the other person and have the other person hear you so that you can find options mm -hmm. to get through this very difficult emotional mm -hmm. separation. So we have a caller for you, Dan. Good evening. What is your question for us this evening? Hello, Dan. Yes, good evening. Good evening. I, I understand you have a question for Ari. Please go ahead. Well, it's a kind of a two-part question. Sure. Okay, uh, the first part is... Uh, uh, I was married twice, but the second wife that I was married to, mm -hmm. we just split up. Mm -hmm. And I took what I wanted, she took what she wanted, whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I just lost my brother in uh, July, and I heard that, uh, you know, like I would have had to go through a lot of legal things with him. Mm -hmm. um, now, I heard a right, we've been apart for probably 15 or more years. Mm -hmm. I heard that she still has a right to come into my place and take what she wants if something happened to me. That's a good question. So, Ari, what, what's the reality there? Well, first of all, I mean, you're going through an extremely difficult time. Not only are you separating for the, the second time, but you just lost a brother, which is extremely mm -hmm. difficult. So the most important thing for you is, is for support right now. And I don't know if that's the, what you're availing yourself of, um, because you need that to see through the legal question, which you just asked, which is rights to her to come back into the house, which is a very- years later. Which, which, which is a very very valid question and the time period is something that would concern you if that's something that you're not expecting so we have professionals to help and it would be good to consult with a lawyer especially when it comes to your property because you don't want things to happen in your house that you're not expecting uh, whoever it is right so mm -hmm. it's certainly important that you have dealt with the issues regarding the separation and you need to do that like we said in the beginning in order to get you from A to B to C resolution so you need to see a lawyer a family lawyer in particular that could help you wade through uh, those issues 
Uh, but uh, to answer his question, uh, would she have any rights at this point if they, they're not legally divorced, but they've been separated for 15 years, uh, would she have any kind of rights at this point? Well, if she has not been into the house for 15 years, then that means you're occupying the house. But that's why it's also extremely important that it's papered somehow and legally documented. And I understand why you may not have been, it may not have been important to do so uh, at that time. But somebody can't just walk into the house without having lawful cause. And there may be she may have been able to you know go to court and have a piece of paper and you may or may not know about that which is why you need to protect yourself just in case she has availed herself of a process that you're not expecting mm -hmm. right so but presumptively could. you know no based on what you're saying mm -hmm. but that doesn't change that people may do things even if it may not be what they're allowed to do at a particular time but right conceivably it could happen so yeah, it's always a good so. idea to protect yourself I hope that helps you out and uh, I agree with Ari that it would be very important to get all the support that you need right now because uh, that's a big loss. So uh, do protect yourself and I hope you have a great support group. Thank you so much for your call. Viewers, if you'd like to find out more, please call us right now to get expert advice. Now the two subsets of the process are mediation and arbitration. Um, the one is legally binding, one is not. So maybe you can uh, real quick tell us the difference between the two. So remember before when I said you can either negotiate or litigate your issues. And when I said before I, I said you mainly do that in court. Well, you don't have to do the litigation part in court. You can do the litigation before an arbitrator. And that's the, a person, uh, which I do as well, with mediation. You can have a private person decide your legal dispute. If you both agree to do so, you can avail yourself of that process through alternative dispute resolution. So ADR is basically the profession of providing you with justice services mm -hmm. outside of the courts. And it's almost always more cost effective to do so. You asked earlier, if you go to court and litigate with a lawyer for a two day trial for a family dispute, it could cost you each forty thousand dollars wow I'm not making that up and that doesn't even count the prep work that the lawyer is going to be doing in advance well we have a call another call for you okay well we're getting the call ready um, so then uh, essentially you're, you're talking about arbitration can be binding and like you said you don't have to go to to court and the whole litigation process so the main difference is between if it's binding or not binding right. by that person so right. mediation is not binding legally until you voluntarily make a decision to resolve uh, one of the questions so if you can't decide on where to send your child to school mm -hmm. then you can negotiate that with professionals and a mediator and if you say well if we can't decide that question we're gonna have a parenting professional arbitrate make a legally binding decision to say he's not gonna go to this school he's gonna go to that school and in that situation you would both provide submissions as to reasons why you think he should go to this one or to that one can and it be the challenged so that all depends on how you agree, because in ADR you are in charge, mm -hmm. uh, you say what can be challenged or not mm -hmm. in advance. Like it's, it's all customizable based on what you and the other party want for the purpose of resolving your dispute. So generally speaking, arbitration awards, which is what they're called, that's the legally binding you know, court-like order that's issued by an arbitrator, uh, can and often is legally binding and it can even be filed with the court. So just because you decide to leave the court system because it's more cost effective, that may have worked at one time, mm -hmm. but it may not work at another time. So any time you can go back to the court uh, because courts ultimately have uh, the jurisdiction to make sure that family affairs are resolved uh, fairly and legally and so et lots cetera. of permutations going on. Viewers, if you have any questions for Ari regarding the best way to handle a difficult process, us, grab your phone, call us right now to make the most of this rare opportunity. And of course, as always, I'm here to take your questions on any and everything to do with other relationship and intimacy challenges that you might be facing. Um, Ari, we have another question for you, but we are running off to break. Would you mind sticking around until after the break just to take this question and wrap things up for us? I would be honored to. Thank you so much because it is a very uh, convoluted process. Most people don't think about it as that convoluted, so you are sharing a lot of very important 
important options because people think they don't have options and that's the beauty of what we're talking about tonight is to go over some of the options and gain an understanding into what's the best and be emotionally and financially as safe as is possible. Couldn't have said it better. We'll be right back. Keep your calls coming. Let's discuss sex, relationships, romance or whatever else rocks your boat and keep it locked on Rogers TV because we have lots more great stuff still ahead including your calls so pick up that phone and call so we can connect.